I haven't posted very many update videos lately. I've been so busy testing. So I think here in one video I'll, I'll go over a bunch of new things that I've been doing and uh, all the cool stuff that VMAS has been working on. Uh, what we've got here is a wider lens for the micro camera that gives us a uh, more vertical field of view. Makes it easier to go through those ladders uh, up and down. And I like it a lot. Uh, it's pretty similar to the Rattel 1.66 millimeter lens if you already have that one. And it sticks out of the body a little bit more than the uh, very, very short lens that comes with the camera stock. Uh, speaking of that camera, the Micro HD Zero camera, that is coming out very, very soon. And there's a bunch of new updates to that that I can tell you about. Uh, if you stick around a little bit later into the video, we'll get into that. There's been a lot of talk about latency testing. I've done some testing and so on. I think maybe you should have a listen to what Evan Turner and what some other top pilots thought about it at I.O. I didn't even notice it until you said it. Yeah, like it felt like normal. zero break up. This is 25 milliwatt. Yeah. And you can fly this for analog pieces too. No way. Yeah. It does timing work with it? Yeah. All the things. There was somebody working on that last year. There you go. Really? Yeah, it works. The claw is good too. Yeah, that feels, that feels way better than these. Short by some footy frames. Up there. I don't think the quality is that much different, really. No. I think when you're racing and they're going that fast, no, you can't it's, tell. It's not enough. Like maybe if I like sit in front of a gate, I can feel a little bit different from DJI. But if I'm actually moving, it doesn't really feel that different. Yeah. But the, the feel definitely feels And this is a nano cam too. This is not no, that's a micro. Oh, that's the micro. Oh, yeah, just the latency feels way better. <laughs> the latency, I don't feel any latency difference. I don't need to lie on that, I mean, probably if you went back to that, maybe there's the latency. Yeah, it's uh, worst case like 25 milliseconds glass to glass. No, an analog can be. Analog like 14 glass. Yeah. What do you What's analog? I think analog. It depends how you measure it, but around 16 maybe. Um, I think it'll get a little bit better with the new goggle. But I, th I already think it's really good. Yeah, that feels great. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I have a DJI, but I only use it for fly-throughs because I can't do it fast enough to race with it. I do fast enough to like fly to a track and show people the sports, yeah. but I can't like push on it because the latency just messes me up too much. Yeah, yeah. Look at that little board. But that felt really good. Oh, it just goes on the so stack. So here's some analog footage on the right, GoPro on the left. Oh, I'm just kidding. Uh, this is actually the new uh, wide lens on the micro camera. I think we're all past calling uh, SharkBite or HG0 analog quality at this point. Um, this is a little sneak peek at some of the one watt prototype VTX testing that I've been doing. Um, this is preliminary and isn't final and the power output might not be full one watt yet. Um, that's all got to be verified with a tool. But I think it looks very good, very clear when going through behind these trees. Um, I'll also say the antenna placement on this quad was very suboptimal. Um, just due to some things with antenna uh, sensitivities, I guess we'll call it. I couldn't uh, elevate the antenna above the battery so it's the antenna is right behind the battery so if I fly back towards myself it is going to be worse reception by quite a lot because the battery will be uh, soaking up the RF and out here there's nothing for the RF to bounce off of so yeah I I don't know I can go up pretty far I can show you what 200 milliwatt looks like it doesn't look like this uh, this is better. Uh, it looks pretty clear. It looks very promising. 
And yeah, so this is a case where the battery completely blocked the signal. Um, yeah, pretty good. I liked it a lot. Um, so I also was flying here at this exact moment with my friend Jeff, who was on 1200 milliwatt DJI. So that's interesting, right? Flying with someone on DJI at the same time. I was within about 15 feet of them. And I mean, not very much breakup. That's a pretty interesting observation also. Uh, what else could I say here? I flew the DJI Quad. I did not like the DJI Quad. <laughs> so at first it was at uh, uh, 60 FPS high quality mode and instantly noticed that. It's very easy to pick that out. So I flipped it over into the 120 FPS mode and that was quite a bit better, but it was still weird. Yeah, it was like playing a video game where the frame rate isn't locked and it's moving up and down, never actually hitting the target that you specify. And yeah, like Shark Bite, I feel like I'm right there in the moment. Uh, there might be breakup, but I don't really notice it. The timing is critical to the immersion for me. If the timing changes, it breaks the immersion. So, yeah, HD Zero, Shark Bite, whatever. It, I, you feel like you're in the drone. Uh, flying with DJI, not so much. It's more like playing a video game where the frame rate's going all over the place. I promised I'd talk about the micro camera, so let's talk about it. As everybody knows, the micro camera got delayed because of a defect in the design. Uh, I think it was an impedance miss uh, out of spec on the MIPI interface, which would cause intermittent connections uh, with the camera and the VTX. So beta units went out, and we wanted to get some feedback from all the users and see if we could bring that into the product to make it better. Uh, one of those things was, can we have a way to retain the MIPI connector and protect the back of the camera? So as you can see in this picture, there's now a back plate on the camera to protect it from impacts and, uh, and to hold down the, the MIPI connector. So thank you to the community for suggesting that. Another huge big item here that the community was begging for myself included, was a way to actually control the camera settings. Yeah, if you know anything about the DJI version of this, uh, there is no way to control the camera settings. And that's because there's no uh, communication uh, link with the camera and the video t transmitter. So Carl added this uh, I squared C link in to control the camera settings. And now we have basic things like brightness, sharpness, and saturation. Personally, I, I think I'm going to be turning the sharpness down one notch and probably also turning the saturation down a little bit. But other than that, I really like the way that the, the camera looks from factory. Um, this menu is going to be accessible through the, the VTX uh, menu, the one where you move the joysticks down into the middle. Uh, so it's not the same camera control menu that we have with the nano cameras. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit nicer looking because it's actually controlled by the VTX instead of the camera itself. But wait, there's more. So in the racing videos I've been showing here, it's all been on a standard Switchback Pro. Yeah, a standard Switchback Pro with standards height standoffs. Yeah. How did I do that? There might be a new race VTX coming that fits into most every frame. And I'm pretty excited for it. So that more details to come on that later. And for anybody wondering why Divi Math is working on race VTXs, um, and they should be focusing on one watt VTXs and 
racing is such a small corner of the market. I mean, whatever. I, I guess that's right. But racing is something that HD0 does very well and has a strong potential to do very well in that market in 2022. Also, keep your eyes peeled for multi-GP championships because there might be something pretty interesting happening there too. What can I say? This is some of the most interesting things in FBV that I've seen for a while. Buckle up. <laughs> There's more and I haven't showed everything to you yet.